Uh, let me ask you the all important question about size. So uh, does size matter in terms of neural networks uh, with how good the system performs? Uh, so GPT-3, 3.5 had 175 billion. Problems. I heard GPT-4 had 100 trillion. 100 trillion. Can I speak to this? Do you know that meme? Yeah, the big purple circle. Do you know where it originated? I don't, do you? I'd be curious to hear. It's the presentation I gave. No way. Yeah. Uh, huh. A journalist just took a snapshot. Huh. Now I learned from this. It's right when GPT-3 was released. I gave a, it's on YouTube. I gave a description of what it is. And I spoke to the limitation of the parameters and like where it's going. And I talked about the human brain and how many parameters it has, yeah. synapses and so on. And um, perhaps like an idiot, perhaps not. I, I said like GPT-4, like the next, as it progresses. What I should have said is GPT-N or something I like can't this. believe that it, this came from you. That is... But that people something. should go to it. It's totally taken out of context. They didn't reference anything. They took it. This is what GPT-4 is going to be. And I feel horrible about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't. It, I, I don't think it matters in any serious way. I mean, it's not good because, uh, again, size is not everything. But also people just take uh, a lot of these kinds of discussions out of context. Uh, but it is interesting to, comp I mean, that's what I was trying to do, to, com to compare in different ways uh, the difference between the human brain and the neural network, and this thing is getting so impressive. This is like in some sense, someone said to me this morning actually, and I was like, oh, this might be right. This is the most complex software object humanity has yet produced. And it will be trivial in a couple of decades, right? It'll be like kind of anyone can do it, whatever. Um, but yeah, the amount of complexity relative to anything we've done so far that goes into producing this one set of numbers is quite something. Yeah, complexity, including the entirety of the history of human civilization that built up all the different advancements to technology, that built up all the content, the data that, was, uh, that GPT was trained on, that is on the internet, that it's the compression of all of humanity, <laughs> of all of the... Maybe not the experience. All of the text output that humanity produces, yeah. which is somewhat different. I mean, it's a good question. How much, if all you have is the internet data, how much can you reconstruct the magic of what it means to be human? I think we'd be surprised how much you can reconstruct. <laughs> but you probably need a more, uh, better and better and better models. But on that topic, how much does size matter? By like number of parameters? Number of parameters. I think people got caught up in the parameter count race in the same way they, they got caught up in the gigahertz race of processors in like the you know 90s and 2000s or whatever. You, I think, probably have no idea how many gigahertz the processor in your phone is. But what you care about is what the thing can do for you. And there's you know different ways to accomplish that. You can bump up the clock speed. Sometimes that causes other problems. Sometimes it's not the best way to get gains. Um, but I think what matters is getting the best performance and you know, we, I think one thing that works well about OpenAI is we're pretty truth-seeking in just doing whatever is going to make the best performance, whether or not it's the most elegant solution. So I think like LLMs are a sort of hated result in parts of the field. Everybody wanted to come up with a more elegant way to get to generalized intelligence. And we have been willing to just keep doing what works and looks like it'll keep working. So I've spoken with Noam Chomsky, who's been kind of um, one of the many people that are critical of uh, large language models being able to achieve general intelligence, right? And so it's an interesting question that they've been able to achieve so much incredible stuff. Do you, do you think it's possible that large language models really is the way we, we build AGI? I think it's part of the way. I think we need other super important things. This is philosophizing a little bit. Like what, what kind of components do you think uh, in a technical sense or a poetic sense? Does it need to have a body that it can experience the world directly? I don't think it needs that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say any of this stuff with certainty. Like we're deep into the unknown here. For me, a system that cannot go significantly add to the sum total of scientific knowledge we have access to, kind of discover invent whatever you want to call it, new fundamental science is not a super intelligence. 
And to do that really well, I think we will need to expand on the GPT paradigm in pretty important ways that we're still missing ideas for. But I don't know what those ideas are. We're trying to find them. I could argue sort of the opposite point that you could have deep, big scientific breakthroughs with just the data that GPT is trained on. So like, I maybe, think some of maybe. it is, like if you prompt it correctly. Look, if an oracle told me far from the future that GPT-10 turned out to be a true AGI somehow, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just some very small new ideas, I would be like, okay, I can believe that. Not what I would have expected sitting here would have said a new big idea, but I can believe that. This prompting chain, if you extend it very far and and then increase at scale the number of those interactions, like what kind of, these things mm. start getting integrated into human society <laughs> and starts building on top of each other. I mean, like we, I don't think we understand what that looks like. It's, like you said, it's been six days. The thing that I am so excited about with this is not that it's a system that kind of goes off and does its own thing, but that it's this tool that humans are using in this feedback loop. Helpful for us for a bunch of reasons. We get to, you know, learn more about trajectories through multiple iterations, but I am excited about a world where AI is an extension of human will and a amplifier of our abilities and this like, you know, most useful tool yet created. And that is certainly how people are using it. And I mean, just like look at Twitter, like the the results are amazing. People's like self-reported happiness with getting to work with this are great. So yeah, like maybe we never build AGI, but we just make humans super great still a huge win yeah i said i'm, I'm part of those people like the, the amount <laughs> uh, I, I derive a lot of happiness from programming together with gpt uh part of it is a little bit of terror of can you say more about that <laughs> there's a meme <laughs> i saw today that uh, everybody's freaking out about uh, sort of gpt taking programmer jobs no it's uh, the the reality is just it's going to be taking like if it's going to take your job it means you're a shitty programmer there's some truth to that maybe there's some human element that's really fundamental to the creative act to the act of genius that is in, in great design that is involved in programming and maybe I'm just really impressed by the, all the boilerplate but that I don't see as boilerplate, but it's actually pretty boilerplate. Yeah, and maybe that you create like, you know, in a day of programming, you have one really important idea. Yeah, and that's the contribution. That would be, and that's provided. the contribution. And there may be, like, I, I think we're gonna find, so I suspect that is happening with great programmers and that GPT-like models are far away from that one thing, even though they're gonna automate a lot of other programming. But, Again, most programmers have some sense of, you know, anxiety about what the future is going to look like, but mostly they're like, this is amazing. I am yeah, 10 yeah. times more productive. Yeah. Don't ever take this away from me. There's not a lot of people that use it and say like, turn this off, you know? Yeah, so I, I think, uh, so to speak to the psychology of terror is more like, this is awesome. This is too awesome, I'm it's scared. Too awesome. Yeah, <laughs> there is a little <laughs> bit of- coffee tastes too good. <laughs> you know, when Kasparov lost to Deep Blue, somebody said, and maybe it was him, that like chess is over now. Yeah. If an AI can beat a human at chess, then no one's going to bother to keep playing, right? Because like, what's the purpose of us or whatever? That was 30 years ago, 25 years ago, something like that. I believe that chess has never been more popular than it is right now. And people keep wanting to play and wanting to watch. And by the way, we don't watch two AIs play each other, no. which would be a far better game in some sense than whatever else. But that's that's not what we choose to do. Like we are somehow much more interested in what humans do in this sense. And whether or not Magnus loses to that kid, then what happens when two much, much better AIs play each other? Well. Actually, when two AIs play each other, it's not a better game by our definition of better. Because we just can't understand it. No, I think I think they just draw each other. I think the human flaws, and this might apply across the spectrum here, with the AIs will make life way better, but we'll still want drama. We will, that's we'll for sure. We'll still want imperfection and flaws, and AI will not have as much of that. Look, 
I mean, I hate to sound like utopic tech bro here, but if you'll excuse me for three seconds, like the 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 level of the increase in quality of life that AI can deliver is extraordinary. We can make the world amazing and we can make people's lives amazing. We can cure diseases. We can increase material wealth. We can like help people be happier, more fulfilled, all of these sorts of things. And then people are like, oh, well, no one is going to work. But people want status. People want drama. People want new things. People want to create. People want to like feel useful. Um, people want to do all these things. And we're just going to find new and different ways to do them, even in a vastly better, like unimaginably good standard of living world.